If you have not yet viewed part one, please do so first before watching part two. You can do that now by clicking the link up above or in the comments down below. So in terms of what the Climate Council thinks, this is not really a partisan issue. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. As I said, everybody's affected. Yeah. Um, I don't care what your political leanings are. We don't care, um, you know, what your other political concerns are. We can all come together with one thing. The global warming cycle we have right now is going to hurt everybody. And we have to take actions both individually and as a community to find ways to stop and reverse it. Right. So that's what the Climate Council is focused on. And I, I, I'm getting the impression lately that in the last year, even with the, the difficulties with the current administration, Republicans are, are becoming willing to speak out a little bit more about, mm -hmm. about uh, the seriousness of the issue. Uh, regardless of the party, there's a lot of people that have had um, doubts, skepticism about the causes of global warming. But everybody's recognizing what's happening. You know, we've seen these upticks in hurricanes, droughts, fires, floods. I mean, the, the past few years has just been this continual litany of natural disasters. So we all know they're there, and we all know we need to do something about it. So I think everybody across the political spectrum is stepping up to do something, and I think that's wonderful. Um, Multi-generational, you know, we, we not only have our political spectrum, but we also have different generations, you know, the young people that's so affected by climate change, you know, those of us that are in the older generation that are doing what we can to help mitigate this process. But it's a matter of us all coming together, irres irrespective of your age, of your political leanings, this is the one issue that we can share and actually have a huge impact yeah, in, right. in making our society better for everybody. Well, global warming does not discriminate, so Absolutely. we all should not discriminate as far as who should and should not be involved in this fight against the climate emergency. Okay. What else is the Climate Council doing uh, about global warming? Um, our presentations um, providing free education. I think the, the one most important thing we do is helping educate the public. Um, I think everybody's concerned. A lot of people may have the impression that it's a done deal. There's nothing we can do. You know, let's just you know, find the hole to crawl into and get ready for the planet to end. That's not the case. There are actually positive steps we can do. And there's, there's groups out there that have projected that we can turn this thing around. We can actually reverse global warming back to zero. And it requires immediate action, but if we all work together, it's very possible. Hence the need for educating the public. Um, our primary responsibility in terms of amplifying our partners' voices, being yeah. that hub, is to help disseminate all the wonderful information people like you have. Make sure that's available to everybody. So um, the public, our subscribers, if you will, and you know, and the subscribers are people that come to the Climate Council. They don't necessarily have their own group or their own source of information but they can subscribe, free subscription to our website, and they'll get little weekly, what we call the Climate Digest, yeah. which is um, a listing of all the events, um, presentations and such that are available throughout the area. So it's our way of making this material available to the larger public so we can all become better educated on the choices we can make both personally and as a community to stop this global warming event. Yeah. Well, depending on what cable shows you watch, you might think that we all live on different planets. Yeah. So how do I find reliable information? Uh, we have a, um, a news blog on our website. Um, it's actually um, goes through an RSS feed. So if you want to subscribe to our news, it can be sent to your browser automatically. Um, we are on all the social media, so follow us at Climate GKC, whether you're on um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those things. We have our own YouTube channel we're starting up. Uh, I appreciate this yeah. opportunity to learn from both of you. Um, so we're putting all this information out there. So if, if you're tired of the, and we will call it political, because the news stations, whether they're conservative or liberal, they all tend to politicize climate, and we need to stop doing that. We need to start finding legitimate information 
that is nonpartisan, that is there to help educate us on positive actions we can take and try to step away from the information, the cable channels or whatever, that primarily have a political agenda and are using climate as a hammer to perpetuate their political agenda. So the news we provide on the Climate Council is very neutral. We, it doesn't have a political leaning. We are just looking at what the current science is, um, what we can take away from that, and what actions we as individuals and groups can actually take to make a difference. Does, um, does the Climate Council have a, a, a date that you can say, this was our inception date, this is when we officially began? I know we recently got our 501c3, yes. so that's one date, but, but when, when was this thing really hatched? We started discussing this last fall. I, bl I believe the first group I, I spoke with about this was in October. We actually pulled together a small group of very committed, committed environmental activists in November and decided that we wanted to form a new nonprofit to perpetuate this vision of a, um, you know, a technology platform to help all the partners in the area. And um, it's really gone quite rapidly if you figure what, November, December, you know, five months. So, you know, we are a full nonprofit now. And the purpose of our nonprofit is to fund this platform. Yeah. We are not asking money from anybody. We don't, you know, please partner with us. You know, that's not going to cost you anything. These are free resources we'll provide you and all the other groups out there. Um, subscribers, you know, free subscription. We will provide you information, presentations, events you can come to, and absolutely no charge to you. So the whole point of creating the nonprofit is to get the funding to come in to support this platform so we can provide it free to the community and help make a yeah. change. You know, after I was trained by Al Gore in his Climate Reality Project in uh, September of 2015, and I began making presentations, mm -hmm. the hardest thing for me to come up with, there was, it's real easy to say, hey folks, be scared. Here's mm -hmm. all this bad stuff that's happening. Here's all this bad stuff that's going to happen. And I was, at a loss as to how to give people direction. And as you know, because this is just now starting to get steamrolled, drawdown uh, is, is a concept that actually talks about drawing down carbon out of the atmosphere. And you can go to drawdown.org to find out more information. But we, we now have uh, some really good things to say about, well, it's not doom and gloom. We have some real opportunities. So wh when, when people ask you, what's the most important thing I can do? What do you tell them? There's a lot of important things you can do. Um, and I hate it when somebody says, what's the most important thing? Because, yeah. you know, that it's, it's such a, a, a wide wealth of opportunities that we can all take. But being forced into that question, my answer is always to make educated choices. Take the time, take the energy to learn, to learn about what's going on. And, and that's looking at the news we provide, that's coming to presentations that we provide. Educate yourself so you can make educated choices. And through those educated choices, then you can implement some of the solutions and draw down. That is about sequestering carbon, removing it from the air. And that's what actually reverses global warming. One of the things I like to talk about is reduce and sequester. They're the two sides of the coin. Um, we are in a global warming cycle. The carbon is in the air. The, the impacts have already begun. If we were to magically find a solution where we could just instantly stop emitting greenhouse gases right now, we would still be in a crisis because the warming cycle has started. So reduction is not the total solution. On the other side, we have sequestration, and that's the drawdown. That's taking the carbon out of the air. If we found wonderful solutions to sequester and we started pulling carbon out of the air, that still wouldn't fix it if we're still pumping new greenhouse gases in. So we have to do both. There's not one solution. We have to both reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, which you know is about clean energy, um, you know, um, transportation choices, you know, moving away from fossil fuels in many cases, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and then also taking these personal and community actions we can to sequester, to remove the carbon from the air. And that can be as simple as um, 
food choices. I mean, various foods have totally different impacts on the environment. Um, planting trees, um, creating gardens and such that help sequester the conditions of our soils, protecting our peat bogs, which is one of the greatest sequestration tools we have in the entire nation. So it's a combination of choices. So that's why to answer your question again, yeah. I come back to the, if I can just say one thing, then it's about educating yourself so you know what choices to make. Yeah. So if I, on an individual level, want to make my home or car more climate efficient, uh, where can I go for more information? Um, i refer you to our website, climatecouncilgkc.org or climategkc if you want to take the shortcut. Um, we have resources there, um, not only our partners' presentations that will talk about those things, but other online resources that can help you make choices. Um, one of our partners, Renew Missouri, has presentations that they will bring to your group to talk about solar choices you can make and, and incentives and stuff on you know your homes and such. Mm -hmm. um, they'll also be presenting a breakout at our, um, I'm calling it the EDC, the Earth Day Celebration, yeah. which is on April 20th. So if you just want to show up at the Plaza Library, you can just sit in on those sessions and learn, you know, certainly how to make your home more energy efficient. And you can probably go to the, the website and there'll be all kinds of information about all that. All of that event. information's on the website. I mean, if you just go to climatecouncilgkc.org, you'll see the big banner right at the top of the page about the EDC, and that'll give you the full day's schedule. So if I have a, a church or an organization or a business or just a group of people, a club, uh, and, and I want I want to get someone to talk about this issue. Uh, is there there's there's information on the website? Yeah, that's where our catalog comes in, and and we call that our education catalog. So if you go to the website, you'll see a menu option that says education. Click on there, and that will give you a list of partner presentations. Now those presentations are free. Um, we ask for groups of 15 or more. I mean, nobody wants to show up yeah. and do a one-on-one. -on -one. We don't need to do a presentation for Although that. I've done that before. <laughs> and, and I'm sure that happens. So, you know, we ask you to, you know, bring together a group of 15 or more, but we will bring the speakers to you. And we have a range of, of presentations. You know, uh, I just talked about Re New Missouri's um, presentations on the um, solar and other incentives that are available to, you know, for your house and such. Um, we have... Um, Dr. King, the General King, talking about the strategic impacts of global warming. Um, there's a pre presentation on there about sustainable food. So the, how the food choices you make will impact greenhouse gas emissions and other things. And um, I'm trying to think what else. We have drawdown presentations on there. So a wide range of very interesting and action oriented. The, these aren't just um, esoteric presentations. These are things that people can come in and speak to your group you know, church club, yeah. um, your work, your homeowners association. Um, these speakers can come in and speak to you and they will actually leave you with things to do, to, to engage and to make a difference. So um, one of the things you could do is just get some of our speakers to come in and speak to your group and then take the actions they recommend. That can make a huge difference. And I, I have also been remiss because uh, I, I need to get my information about my climate reality talks all out Indeed. more on the website. Indeed. So you'll also be able to find that up there. <laughs> Very good. Look forward to that. Yeah. Well, one last question for you. A lot of people might argue, aren't we all doomed anyway? And so really, what's the point? How would you respond to individuals with that? Yeah, and I, and I think we've addressed that a little bit. Um, and you mentioned that earlier, you know, the cycle of gloom and doom. Yeah. You know, p with the drawdown, with a lot of the new solutions, we're, we are finding solutions. You know, drawdown is, is a list of um, 80 different areas that we can have a very positive impact on not just stopping global warming, but actually reducing it reversing it, bringing it back to zero. So there are solutions today. And this is an emergency. I mean, I'm not encouraging you to sit back and let this happen because it won't happen unless you and everybody you know stands up and takes action today. We need to move on this now, but there are positive things that we can all do to make this better. And it is going to take everybody. And it, it does take, take every everybody. every nation as well. It takes every nation. It takes every group within that nation. And it takes um, political willpower as well as individual willpower. Yeah. We need to be working at all levels of institution and government to turn this around. And as you mentioned earlier, we are seeing a positive trend. People are getting engaged. Um, 
you know, municipalities are getting engaged. Everybody has seen the writing on the wall. Everybody has seen that there are solutions. And I'm very proud to say that everybody is stepping up. And let's continue that trend. If you haven't stepped up, you need to, because we need everybody. And you know, congrats to the people that are there. We welcome everybody else into making this thing work for us, for the next generations, for your, your, your daughter there who will, you know, needs this as much as all of us. Yeah. Thank you, Bob, for coming and, and talking to us today. And thank uh, congratulations you. on such a great organization. I know I'm excited about it. Well, thank you. Uh, and that's why I got involved uh, with the steering committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can find more information and more links down below in the comments. So uh, check that out. And uh, thank you for coming today. And we'll see you next week. We are a partner with the Climate Council of Greater Kansas City, a technology hub for organizations supporting solutions for the climate crisis. This video is sponsored by the Heartland Renewable Energy Society, working to create a clean, safe, and renewable energy future.